Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be starting a new Winx series based on how mythology has influenced the world of Winx Club. Winx Club is actually heavily based upon real world mythology, so this series will be split up into different parts. Today's episode will be about the usage of Greek mythology in the Winx universe. I think one of the biggest criticisms of the franchise would be the writing. And to some degree, I can absolutely agree with that. However, I think because of all the plot holes, inconsistencies, and character flaws, we are overlooking something that the writers for Winx Club actually do well with. Did you know that Winx Club is actually laden with references to Greek mythology? If you didn't, great, because now you know something new. But if you already did, that's fine too, because I'm going to be going into a bit more detail on what those references are exactly. From what I've found, the biggest usage of Greek mythology in Winx Club is actually through the names of the characters. A lot of names were either derived from Greek names, or they were taken straight out of the mythology without any changes whatsoever. I'm going to be running through a list of character names that allude to Greek mythology, and for each one I'm going to try to give as small an explanation as I can on what that name is referencing. Before we start, I want to add a little bit of a disclaimer. Due to various translations and different texts of Greek mythology, there are many different variations and interpretations of certain happenings. Because of this, there will be a bit of discrepancy between how I choose to describe certain events in Greek mythology when compared to some other sources. Also, I'm not too used to pronouncing Greek names, so if I mess up pronunciation, I apologize in advance. Well, here goes. Musa's name is very similar to the word Muse, which in Greek mythology refers to the nine goddess daughters of Zeus, presided over the arts and sciences. The muse that correlates most with Musa would be Euterpe, the muse of lyric poetry in music. Euterpe is known to be the most cheerful of her sisters, and her symbol is a double flute called an alas. Euterpe is even credited by some to have been the inventor of flutes. I find this pretty interesting considering the number one instrument we see Musa play, other than guitar, would be flute. Speaking of the Nine Muses, they are revered in a pretty similar way to the Nine Nymphs of Magics. And to top it all off, the Muses were often depicted with wings and were also sometimes described as nymphs themselves. Daphne refers to a Naiad nymph, who is a demigoddess who thrives in fresh water of the same name. There are different classifications of naiads depending on the water they dwell in. Daphne from Winx Club would classify as a limnid, since her home as a spirit is in Lake Rokoliche. Daphne, mentioned in mythology, was also the daughter of a river god. She was known for her great beauty, and she eventually caught the eye of Apollo, a god of sun and light. Apollo chased after Daphne even though she refused his advances. Eventually, Daphne prayed for help in breaking free from Apollo, and in doing so, Daphne was transformed into a laurel tree. The word for laurel is Daphne in Greek, and the laurel later became the symbol of Apollo and poetry. Quick little fact about nymphs, the etymology of the word is linked to marriage, which makes it pretty ironic that Daphne the nymph is so far the only main-ish character to have officially married on screen at Winx Club. Helios' name is the feminine form of Helios. He was the Greek sun god famously known to ride across the skies in a golden chariot which raised the sun each day. There's not much else to say here, but according to some sources, he named one of his daughters Helia. Countess Cassandra is based on quite the tragic figure in Greek mythology. Cassandra was a young priestess and princess of Troy who possessed great beauty. Eventually, she was given the gift of prophecy by Apollo when she caught his eye. However, he quickly turned that gift into a curse by adding to the gift so that no one would ever believe Cassandra's prophecies as true as they may be. Cassandra's life was turned upside down as others labeled her as a madwoman, and she was even locked up for a time. All suitors that attempted to ask for her hand ended up dying shortly after taking interest in her. Cassandra even tried to warn the people of Troy about the army of soldiers hiding inside the Trojan horse. 
Of course, because of her curse, no one believed her, and she was unable to prevent the demise of Choi. Her story didn't get much happier from there, she ended up being murdered not long afterwards. I personally find it quite interesting how Countess Cassandra, who's a generic villain in practically every light, shares the same name with such a figure. Kinda makes you think about what her life would be like if Valtor never crossed her path. Countess Cassandra's daughter, Chimera, is named after a mythological creature called a Chimera. Chimeras are a female monster hybrid of a lion, goat, and serpent. They were thought to have been fire-breathing and were conceived as a bad omen by Greek sailors. Headmistress Griffin of Cloud Tower is named after a mythological creature of the same name. With the body of a lion and the head and wings of an eagle, griffins have become symbols of strength and valor over the years and are often used to represent nobility. Actual griffins made an appearance in Winx Club as well, when the Winx and specialists were trying to find the mirror of truth. Professor Palladium's name comes from a wooden statue of the same name. The statue was created in Pallas Athena's likeness and the Trojans believed that so long as the Palladium stayed within their walls, Choi would never fall. Flora's sister, Miele, translates directly into honey from Italian. However, it is also pretty similar sounding to the Mili, who were nymphs associated with ash trees and honey sap. And that's all I'll go through this time. There's still a lot I have left to cover, even just for the Greek mythology. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I was also able to teach you something new. Till next time.